In articulatory phonetics, the manner of articulation is the configuration and interaction of the articulators when making of speech sound. One parameter of manner is stricture, that is, how closely the speech organs approach one another. Others include those involved in the R-like sounds, and the sibilancy of fricatives. The concept of manner is mainly used in the discussion of consonants, although the movement of the articulators will also greatly alter the resonant properties of the vocal tract, thereby changing the form and structure of speech sounds that is crucial for the identification of vowels. For consonants, the place of articulation and the degree of phonation of voicing are considered separately from manner, as being independent parameters. Home organic consonants, which have the same place of articulation, may have different manners of articulation. Often nasality and laterality are included in manner, but some phoneticians, such as Peter Laidfidged, consider them to be independent. Stricture. From greatest to least stricture, speech sounds may be classified along a cline as stop consonants, fricative consonants, approximants, and vowels. Africans often behave as if they were intermediate between stops and fricatives, but phonetically they are sequences of a stop and fricative. Over time, sounds in a language may move along this cline toward less stricture in a process called lenition, or towards more stricture in a process called fortition. Other parameters, sibilants are distinguished from other fricatives by the shape of the tongue and how the airflow is directed over the teeth. Fricatives at coronal places of articulation may be sibilant and non-sibilant, sibilants being the more common. Taps and flaps are similar to very brief stops. However, their articulation and behavior are distinct enough to be considered a separate manner, rather than just length. Trills involve the vibration of one of the speech organs. Since trilling is a separate parameter from stricture, the two may be combined. Increasing the stricture of a typical trill results in a trilled fricative. Trilled affricates are also known. Nasal air flow may be added as an independent parameter to any speech sound. It is most commonly found in nasal occlusives and nasal vowels, but nasalized fricatives, taps, and approximants are also found. When a sound is not nasal, it is called oral. Laterality is the release of airflow at the side of the tongue. This can be combined with other manners, resulting in lateral approximants, lateral flaps, and lateral fricatives and affricates. Individual manners, stop, and oral occlusive, where there is occlusion of the oral vocal tract, and no nasal airflow, so the airflow stops completely. Examples include English, PTK, and BD. If the consonant is voiced, the voicing is the only sound made during occlusion. If it is voiceless, a stop is completely silent. What we hear as a P or K is the effect that the onset of the occlusion has on the preceding vowel, as well as the release burst and its effect on the following vowel. The shape and position of the tongue determine the resonant cavity that gives different stops their characteristic sounds. All languages have stops. Nasal, a nasal occlusive, where there is occlusion of the oral tract but air passes through the nose. The shape and position of the tongue determine the resonant cavity that gives different nasals a characteristic sounds. Examples include English per meter n. Nearly all languages have nasals, the only exceptions being in the area of Puget Sound and a single language on Bougainville Island. Fricative, sometimes called spirant, where there is continuous frication at the place of articulation. Examples include English, F, S, V, Z, etc. Most languages have fricatives, though many have only an per second. However, the indigenous Australian languages are almost completely devoid of fricatives of any kind. Dot. Sibilants are a type of fricative where the airflow is guided by a groove in the tongue toward the teeth, creating a high-pitched and very distinctive sound. These are by far the most common fricatives. Fricatives at coronal places of articulation are usually, though not always, sibilants.
English sibilants include per second and z. Dot. Lateral fricatives are a rare type of fricative, where the frication occurs on one or both sides of the edge of the tongue. The L of Welsh and the HL of Zulu are lateral fricatives. Dot. Affricate, which begins like a stop, but this releases into a fricative rather than having a separate release of its own. The English letters CH and J represent affricates. Affricates are quite common around the world, though less common than fricatives. Flap, often called a tap, is a momentary closure of the oral cavity. The TT of utter and the DD of udder are pronounced as a flap in North American and Australian English. Many linguists distinguish taps from flaps, but there is no consensus on what the difference might be. No language relies on such a difference. There are also lateral flaps, trill, in which the articulator is held in place and the airstream causes it to vibrate. The double R of Spanish pero is a trill. Trills and flaps, where there are one or more brief occlusions, constitute a class of consonant called rotics. Approximant, where there is very little obstruction. Examples include English with an R. Ah. In some languages, such as Spanish, there are sounds that seem to fall between fricative and approximate. Dot. One use of the word semi-vowel, sometimes called a glide, is a type of approximate, pronounced like a vowel but with the tongue closer to the roof of the mouth, so that there is slight turbulence. In English with is the semi-vowel equivalent of the vowel u and j is the semi-vowel equivalent of the vowel i in this usage. Other descriptions use semi-vowel for vowel-like sounds that are not syllabic, but do not have the increased stricture of approximants. These are found as elements in diphthongs. The word may also be used to cover both concepts. The term glide is newer than semivowel, being used to indicate an essential quality of sounds such as with and j, which is the movement from their initial position to a following vowel. Dot. Lateral approximants, usually shortened to lateral, are a type of approximant pronounced with the side of the tongue. English L is a lateral, together with the rhotics, which have similar behavior in many languages, these form a class of consonant called liquids. Dot. Broader classifications, manners of articulation with substantial obstruction of the airflow are called obstruents. These are prototypically voiceless, but voiced obstruents are extremely common as well. Manners without such obstruction are called sonorants because they are nearly always voiced. Voiceless sonorants are uncommon, but are found in Welsh and Classical Greek, in Standard Tibetan, and the WH in those dialects of English that distinguish which from which. Sonorants may also be called resonants, and some linguists prefer that term, restricting the word sonorant to non-vocoid resonants. Another common distinction is between occlusives and continuants. Affricates are considered to be both, because they are sequences of stop plus fricative. Other are airstream initiations. All of these manners of articulation are pronounced with an airstream mechanism called pulmonic egressive, meaning that the air flows outward, and is powered by the lungs. Other airstream mechanisms are possible. Sounds that rely on some of these include adjectives which are glottalic egressive, that is, the airstream is powered by an upward movement of the glottis rather than by the lungs a diaphragm, stops, affricates, and occasionally fricatives may occur as adjectives. All adjectives are voiceless, or at least transition from voice to voiceless. Implosives, which are glottalic ingressive. Here the glottis moves downward, but the lungs may be used simultaneously, and in some languages no air may actually flow into the mouth. Implosive stops are not uncommon, but implosive affricates and fricatives are rare.
voiceless implosives are also rare. Clicks, which are lingual ingressive. Here the back of the tongue is used to create a vacuum in the mouth, causing air to rush in when the forward occlusion is released. Clicks may be oral or nasal, stop or affricate, central or lateral, voice to voiceless. They are extremely rare in normal words outside Southern Africa. However, English has a click in its T-S-K-T-S-K sound, and another is often used to say, giddy up to a horse. Combinations of these, in some analyses, in a single consonant, linguopulmonic and linguoglottalic consonants, which are clicks released into either a pulmonic or ejective stop, fricative, dot, bibliography, Laidfidged, Peter, Madison, Ian. The Sounds of the World's Languages, Oxford, Blackwell, ISBN 0-631-198148.